Daba Mandela, pleasure to have you here, brother. Thank you. So guys, welcome to the show. Super excited. We were like between sets. You were one of the keynote speakers here at Afrobytes. We are here live from Paris, France. That's right. And uh, it's an exciting time to be an entrepreneur. It's an exciting time to be connecting with like-minded people around the world. So tell us about Africa Rising, what you do, why you do it, and uh, what brings you here to Paris for this Afrobytes tech conference. Well, I, uh, I'm the chairman and the founder of a foundation called Africa Rising. And we are all about empowering the youth of Africa. Our vision is to be a catalyst in building the new generation of African leaders who will empower themselves to be at the forefront of Africa's development. Um, approximately every year, 9 million children come out of tertiary institutions, universities, colleges, but there's not 9 million jobs waiting for them, mm. right? Hence, entrepreneurship becomes the key tool in order for them to be able to break that cycle of poverty, yes. right? Yes. So we believe in education and technology. We are currently working on a digital center with the Nelson Mandela Museum in our village because kids in our village finish high school without touching a computer. And where is the village? In Uno, in Umtata, in the Eastern Cape, in South Africa. Okay. Right? How are we going to compete with the rest of the world when they start learning about coding at five years old? So we cannot. So, so we tell, cannot. tell us exactly what you're doing to build out these skill sets and to give this access. So basically, we have partnered with a company called African Team Geeks and another company called the Mzansi Commons. We are doing a series of hackathons. Mm -hmm. uh, we've also partnered with the USDA on doing a hackathon around food access, food security, and attracting young people to agricultural business. Yep. And ultimately, we want to build a thousand digital centers across the continent to allow the youth to interact with each other and the rest of the world. Fantastic. And when you say youth, how old are these? Kids. We started off with high school. Okay. Yeah, teenagers basically. Yep. And then we want to move backwards, so we want to go back down to primary school. Yep. yep. Excellent. So tell us a little bit more about you know what what is next for you. You know, for me, I really want to uh, promote these things of building the technological hubs yep. across the continent. So I'm raising money. I'm raising partnerships to be able to obviously service them yep. uh, to build that infrastructure. But ultimately, what I love doing is you know, going around the world and telling people about Africa, how exciting Africa is. <laughs> so, you know, interesting, and I'm sure you get this all the time, you're Nelson Mandela's grandson. What was it like? Let's yeah, just start with that. I mean, um, it was, um, yeah, it was quite something. So my grandfather, I moved in with him, and uh, I moved in from Soweto, so it was a whole new world for me, yeah. moving from the ghetto to the suburbs. Mm. And my grandfather was really disciplinarian, mm. you know. Um, and he all, all he cared about was your performance at school and making sure you have everything you need for school, including sports or whatever it is that you need for school, he'd provide. So that was a line. And he would, what he put out to the world is a line. wait patiently for that report. <laughs> you'd wait patiently. And of course, you wanted me to be an A student. I wasn't an A student. I was a bad boy. You know, growing up in the ghetto, et cetera, et cetera. Highly politicized at a young age. You know? So for me, it was just about getting by and, you know, just taking it all in that we're now in this new South and, and being able to mingle with different um, races, people from different backgrounds. Was that tough for you? No, it wasn't tough. Young people, we, we, we take it, we take to it like a duck to water, Adaptable. brother. Adaptable. Like, like duck to water. Adaptable. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, but he told me that, Nabba, you're my grandson. Yep. Therefore, people look at you as a leader. Therefore, you must get the best marks in class. I was like, whoa. And what happened? That was a lot of pressure. That's a lot of <laughs> pressure, man. I just got by, you know. Yeah. I was just here. But today, uh, I'm doing better. Yeah. Today, I'm doing a little better. And what's the one thing, what's the biggest thing you took from his life? One thing about Madiba that was so special is that he taught us about humanity. Is that no matter the color of your skin, mm. rich or poor, young or old, we have the potential to achieve greatness. Amazing. And you're carrying that every single day. You're carrying that out every single day with the hundreds of people that you help. Um, I try to motivate the people, of people out there, you, you know. Them. Don't yes. listen to the media all the time. You know, also just take your own initiative sometimes. Yep. And don't be afraid of failing as yep. an entrepreneur. That has to be your best friend failure, you yep. know. How do you take that lesson of humanity and apply it to, to what you see in the world today? Well, of course, we come from a highly politicized racial uh, society of South Africa. 
And so when we're engaging with you know different races, people will automatically apply a ignorant or limited uh, sort of mentality. And you know that's one of the things to say. You have to give everybody the benefit of the doubt. Yep. Regardless. Assume right? everyone's doing their best. Everybody, right? whether they are poor or rich or young or old, give everybody the benefit of the doubt until they screw you over. If they screw you over once, that's it. That's it. Bye bye. I'm out. <laughs> Next Bye. year, by the way. Next year. Here we go. Nelson Mandela, if he was alive, would be turning 100 years old. Wow. So our foundation is embarking on having a series of events, mm -hmm. right, on campaigns, and we're also going to be announcing a leadership course mm. next year to celebrate 100 years of this magnificent, amazing man cool. of a leader. That's cool. And we want you, and we want you to be part of that 100 year celebration. I would be honored, brother. The life and legacy of Nelson Mandela. I would be completely honored, man. Um, final sort of thing about your grandfather. What's one story you remember about him that really was the essence of who he was as a man that you'd like to share with people? So, do you remember when America was looking for weapons of mass destruction? Yep. And the uh, UN had sent the people to go and search, yep. right? And they came back and said, there's no yep. weapons of mass destruction. But America decided to invade anyway. Yep. And so my grandfather was very angry, right? Who was the head of UN at the time? It was Kofi Annan. And he went into the news to make an announcement to have to just talk because he was angry. He had to get this thing off his chest. And he said, why is it that America decided to ignore the, 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 the reports from the United Nations and invade Iraq anyway? Is it because of the United Nations is being led by an African for the very first time? <laughs> what was the response? No. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah. that is the man that he was. Yeah. He stood up next to his brother, yeah. regardless, even against the most powerful nation. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I feel you. Amazing. Where can people find you? You can find me on Facebook. Yeah. Right. We've got the After Rising Foundation. There's Ndalo Mandela on Facebook. Yeah. Ndalo Mandela on Instagram. Yeah. Ndalo Mandela on uh, Twitter. Uh, After Rising Org on uh, Twitter and on Instagram. All right. Yeah. Cool. My man, much continued success, and let's thank you. Let's plan that trip to South Africa. And I look forward to building this hundred years with you, brother. I'm, I'm in, brother. It'd be, right. It would be my honor. Thank it, you for sure, guys. Thanks for watching. Remember, it's your hour, it's your life, it's your dreams. So go get it, because if you don't, nobody else will. The man himself here is a living testament to that, and I hope that it's inspired you as much as it inspired me. See you soon.